So let's put it this way, the individual that decimates a particular area around it upon its energy transfer is one that serves more purposes than just encouraging a person to break apart at their cellular bonds. Why am I talking like Spock? Because if I actually call this thing by its name, I will have admin all over me so quickly this channel will implode. So we all know what this thing is really called, just know I want to call it by its name, but I can't just as a heads up. It's a B-O-M-B-E-R-S. So in Haran, when the Haran virus began to spread, as time Time passed, more than just biters would arise. Now this may have been due to just time, but more than likely it has to do with the genetic diversity as explained in my Volatile episode. With the differences in mental status and physical bodily functions, the runaway effects of the virus would cause more people to mutate and turn into varying infected forms. Some would become your standard biters, walking around looking for anything that moves and generally just getting in the way. Others would become toads, which I will explain in later episodes, and those with severe mental diseases would become the Volatiles, who are just as quick as humans and much more dangerous. Still some, however, got an even shorter end of the stick. These particular people, for reasons that will be discussed in this video, would turn into a form of creature whose only purpose was to throw pieces of themselves in all directions and in the process take out any survivors. But they also have other abilities during this aftermath too. So let's get into the lore and morphology of uh, this guy and learn just what the plans the disease they have has picked out for them. So as we all know with the Haran virus, it's a mutagenic effect on the human genome and it's quite profound. It will create many different variants of infected by interacting with what's already there, creating a rapid cellular division cycle, propagating this particular defect, and ultimately in turn, causing something that may have been rather minor to become the mainstay of this person. The ability of the disease will change people to the point that minor ailments become the sole purpose of the body and drive it. In this guy, let's discuss what's going on internally to create the distended appearance we see now. As people, there are varying levels of air we produce that might be considered funny to those with a sense of humor and anger inducing to those that do not. Sort of like my ex-girlfriend, she did not find them funny. We all know what we're talking about here, flatulence. Yes, there are people out there whose bodies actually produce more flatulence for one reason or another, and there are those that barely do it at all, but the moral of the story here is that there's a reason Beano exists. For those not in the US, it's basically to stop you from farting. Regardless, you're about to learn way more than you ever actually wanted to know about the process, so strap in for that. I know this is a bit of a weird episode, but it's important to understand why this creature looks this way and what are the consequences so let's get into it. When the body produces gas, there are several reasons why this may become an overproduction issue, but for your average person, it's usually caused by the body breaking down and digesting food. The flora in your gut are really something which we are actually beginning to learn in the scientific field that is much more in control of our cravings than we thought, and also the generalized processes when it comes to digestion. With the flora aiding in the breakdown of food to help get more nutrition into the body, as you could probably guess, it's pretty important. Without this flora, people would have a whole host of issues. Issues. Other bacteria would be able to colonize the intestines, making us sick, and we would become malnourished. This symbiotic relationship is great between humans and good bacteria, but again, it produces gas as a byproduct. In those with ailments such as irritable bowel syndrome, or who are colonized with, let's call it, bad bacteria, they will suffer multiple symptoms, but a major one being that they end up with an overproduction of gas as a result. This gas will need to be relieved frequently and with greater urgency than your average person. Hey man, you click subscribe, you knew what you were signing up for. First thing to note, that is with IBS, while a hereditary link has not been established, it appears that some are more prone to it without an actual cause. Stress in these individuals can trigger it and it can lead to inflammation in those intestines. Upon calming down for a while, the symptoms will subside and the intestines should return to their normal operating size and function. It's important to remember that the stress is a key factor in some individuals. The second possibility is that the intestinal inflammation can actually be caused by a bacterial overgrowth or virus. The virus here is of pretty great importance, as you could probably guess considering you know that the Haran virus is in existence but I do not believe that the virus is actively working in the stomach to produce these effects that we see in this creature but I do believe that the virus has a pretty large hand in what's going on. The other effect is bacterial overgrowth which we will need to discuss how that happens in a moment. So when you take antibiotics for a sickness you are basically nuking your naturally occurring flora. The good bacteria in your stomach is destroyed in an effort to cure yourself of whatever the bad bacteria you're currently under attack from is doing. So imagine this way. Your intestines are essentially absolutely coated in bacteria. Sounds gross, but it's actually highly important. The nutrients need to get through them to get into the villi. Oh, what's a villi? Glad you asked. Basically, these are small finger-like protrusions on the small intestine that absorb the nutrients passing by. The bacteria helps break down the food so that the villi can absorb it. So when you're taking an antibiotic, your body begins to lose that bacteria covering in many areas. This is also what makes you tired, but it can have a worse effect. With these open areas, this will present sort of growing platforms 
platforms for harmful bacteria to latch onto. Usually the good bacteria in this area will completely choke out invading bacteria and not give it room to latch onto anything, so it will just continue passing through your system. But with these open areas, it's able to colonize on the villi further down your intestines. Sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? Well, it actually is, because the same bacteria sometimes isn't content to just stay in that spot. It will create an overgrowth of bad bacteria, which will activate the immune response and you will become sick. Even still, there are worse effects. The bacteria can pierce through the villi, and when it does, it can enter the bloodstream. Upon this, a person can get sepsis and actually go into septic shock if it's not immediately treated. It does this by damaging the villi, which can cause bleeding, and look at that, it sneaks in. So those are the big three, possibly genetic, viral activity can affect it, and an overgrowth of bacteria. So how exactly does this create the infected variant that we actually see stalking around the city of Haran? Well, all three of these factors need to come together in just the right way, otherwise it will not work. The guy who releases all of his chemical energy at once is a person who may actually be a sufferer of irritable bowel syndrome. Upon being infected or even witnessing what is happening in his city, it's pretty certain that cortisol would be dumped into his system along with epinephrine and many other oh god run hormones. This would put tremendous stress on the old meat suit and could trigger an episode of inflammation within this person. The issue with IBS is that it can actually make you weaker and tired as you are less successful at converting nutrition. You're in pain and generally the outlook is pretty bleak, more so in a society being overrun by zombies. This person would more than likely have been converted in a matter of days if not immediately in the outbreak. So this has another tier of consequences because simple inflammation is not enough. Stress would aid in the IBS but the Haran virus is still that, a virus. A virus can be very particular about what it attacks or it can be more generalized and considering rabies does have a pretty profound effect on the intestinal system of humans inducing decreased appetite, vomiting, and diarrhea, it's pretty clear that the body would be trying to get rid of this virus in any way that it could. With the IBS already present, this may be happening as well. The virus would be causing a mass purge of normal operating conditions within the stomach. Due to this, this may open up areas of the body for other bacteria to start coming into play. Let's not forget, this guy is definitely an infected, so before things go into the late stage, he may just very well be running around as a biter consuming anyone he finds. This would introduce a lot of bacteria that normally wouldn't be present in the gut of a person. Usually as humans, we cook all of our food, which gets rid of a lot of bacteria, but people are just straight getting eaten raw out in the street. On those people are a lot of bacteria that should never be entering the body anyways. This is pretty integral to the whole line of thinking. This person may start out innocuous enough, running around and snacking on whoever they can, but as bits of person enter the digestive tract, bad bacteria is deposited into the body. Now the question is, is this person alive or have they been forced into the game end category? I believe it's like this really weird middle ground, which basically means zombies. But their intestines are still working to a certain extent, their bodily processes must be working as well. With this bad bacteria deposited into their intestines, their IBS may begin to flare up to an extreme degree. This create even more surface area for the bacteria to grow on and propagate. When this happens, swelling will increase even more, creating a runaway effect leading to what we can see, which is just a massive overgrowth of bacteria. So what effect does this bacterial overgrowth brought on by virus have? Well, gas production is increased, and if you know anything about the breakdown of proteins and fats of a consumed person, which God, I hope you don't, this will create a lot of gas. In particular, a lot of these gases may be flammable. Methane, hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide, and carbon dioxide. While carbon dioxide isn't flammable, the other three are major players. With these three gases swirling around the intestines, surely they could escape, right? Well, be prepared to be grossed out because uh, that's gonna happen. The Haran virus being a form of rabies more than likely had the added effect of extremely dehydrating this person upon infection. An aversion to water and the salivary glands going haywire, this would quickly deplete a person of their water reserves. This also causes another issue. You ever like get into bulking season, which we are currently in and God, I love it. You may find out when you eat a lot of protein, your ability to completely pass stuff through your intestinal tract becomes quite dependent upon how much water you drink throughout the day. If you are dehydrated, good luck my dude because that's not gonna be fun. The same idea can be applied to these guys. Upon eating people, they probably have solidified one end of their intestinal tract. The protein in this area is still being broken down but very slowly and not being moved by the inflamed intestines. When this happens, gases begin to build up in these intestines. With the inflammation increasing pressure and more gases being released than normal and with really no way to relieve it, this would cause the ballooning that we see. Eventually the skin would no longer be able to hold back these intestines and it would split. But I can hear you now. But Roanoke, I watch My 600 Pound Life and those people still have their skin intact on their stomach. Well, the issue is, is that the process is so quick that the skin cannot compensate in time. But also the body may not be diverting nutrients to the skin 
at all, so the skin has become quite decrepit. Not to mention, just as like, you know, kind of common sense thing, those on the show have had years to get to this size, so their body was able to compensate. So now that we have an explanation as to why their abdomen is so inflamed and distended, let's talk about their main attack. I believe the locust can probably explain this best. Boomer! <laughs> When this infected uses its attack, it will seem to convulse and then release all its energy at once. But before getting to that, let's first attempt to get a look at its morphology because I'm sure this is gonna be fun and understand how the main attack is so devastating. We have to start with the feet because much like Bart say the line meme, I have begun to reach memeable status with this phrase. And there's something I never thought would happen in my life. The feet are completely normal, 100% just homegrown feet. Good job, human form. The legs are nothing special either, maintaining their integrity and shape. They do a fairly good job job at moving them from place to place, but they are much slower than your average person or even regular infected, and this could be due to the extra weight that they must carry around their legs, but it's more than sufficient at carrying it. Moving up to the abdomen, we can see the mainstay of what this infected is all about. Inflamed intestines have broken through the abdominal muscle, but also the skin. The pelvis is usually a sort of floor for the intestines, but considering I cannot even see the iliac crest on this infected, unsurprisingly they have spilled over the top of the pelvic girdle. Due to their size, the kidneys would more than likely have been been completely choked out and non-functional. Moving further up, we can see to some degree that the organs of the chest have been affected greatly as well. You may find this surprising, but honestly, it's to be expected. More than likely, at some point, this person would have aspirated the contents of their stomach into their lungs. The lungs are a fairly good area for bacteria growth in the gut to propagate, and so that works. And because of this, the lungs would participate in the energy release, but in a much more stunted degree, considering the trachea would relieve the pressure of the lungs. Around the mid-sagittal line, we do see that the sternum has been completely lost. During the rapid expansion of organs, this would have pushed through the diaphragm and underneath the sternum. When this happened, it would have started with the lower ribs, but it would have began basically popping the sternum out of place. The damage we see to the upper lungs means that the sternum was digging into this area as the back end of it was pushed up around the xiphoid process. Eventually, the pressure would become too great and all those ribs would have been forced outwards and the sternum would have fallen off. Another reason why this may be is that the intestines actually moved up around the spine and pushed the lungs, heart, aorta, and vena cava forward, putting too much pressure on the rib cage, showing us what we see. Around the front of the neck, we can see that most of the skin has been lost, but interestingly, the same can be said around the mouth. Indigestion may have eroded the skin in the esophagus and around the area leading to injury, but prior to this happening, the face may have been experiencing this to a large degree as well, leaving the muscular tissue intact, but not the skin. Also, it could have just been straight up eaten, considering uh, we do see a similar sight on other infected. The shoulders and arms are there in their regular form, so nothing too special, and the rest of the face is also pretty standard for what we see in other infected forms. Moving into its attack, the first thing I notice is that all the intestines are actually moving and convulsing with muscular contractions happening in the chest and shoulders. The gas clearly wouldn't know that you are close, so it's not just moving on its own accord. So what I believe is actually happening here is that upon a stimulus being recognized by the infected, a signal to move is sent out. But this signal is more powerful than just your regular walk signal. More than likely, the vagus nerve is stimulated. And the vagus nerve is a parasympathetic nerve which runs to the guts of a person also runs many other areas and carries out different functions, but this is the most important. When this happens, the intestines are almost fired up to a certain degree, which begins these convulsions. Now, remember those flammable gases I was discussing? What would cause a gas to randomly blow outwards with great force? Ignition. The nerves of the body are interesting in this respect because not only are they stimulating the gas to be moved in the body, but they are also a possible ignition source. While the body does not produce a crazy amount of electricity, it could be hypothesized that upon a stimulus being detected and with a signal sent, the combined electrical activity perhaps ignites the methane, hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide within the infected. These convulsions are actually small areas being ignited until the energy release becomes larger and larger, leading to complete decimation of the infected and any around it. The chemical energy stored would cause the bones within the person to be splintered and sent flying outwards, the ribs being of particular interest due to their size and overall shape. This would cause a fair amount of damage to a person as it becomes like shrapnel. If you're standing too close, the organic blast would be highly devastating to your own meat suit and possibly in your own game end if you're within a certain radius, but it also seems to have another effect. Not only are you now injured, but this virus now blankets the area and probably has infected you, but so does all the bacteria. If you were to escape, you would still have to deal with infections. But at some point, this apparently became a signal to nearby infected who also detect the sound that this energy releasing infected makes upon its end. This wave of noise will move outwards and any newly infected known as virals who 
happen to be within earshot will actually hear it. This is like ringing a dinner bell. They will swarm any person who had triggered the energetic infected to turn on them as well. This two-prong attack is very successful and would presumably have a high conversion rate. So I want to thank you guys for watching. If you made it past all that imagery, then you are cool and you can be my friend. If you are new and enjoyed, subbing is a great way to keep up with the channel and liking helps get the video out there. I will drop my Twitter, Discord, Merch, and Patreon links in the description and I want to thank a few of my patrons. Huge shout out to It's Not a Spoon and Laughy No Skill. I also want to thank Freedom Units 44, Skilt, and Alone Titan as well as the rest of my patrons. You guys are awesome and I swear we will be doing game night sometime soon. Anyhow, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed and I will see y'all in the next one.